today we begin a new chapter on the Srimad Bhagavatam. We are beginning with chapter number 26, which is entitled Wonderful Krishna. Krishna is wonderful. And uh, we'll be reading from text number one today. But before we read from text number one, I'll just read the chapter summary as given by the disciples of Srila Prabhupada. Chapter 26, Wonderful Krishna. In this chapter, Nanda Maharaj describes Krishna's opulences to the cowherd men as Nanda had heard them from Garga Muni. The cowherd men, unaware of Lord Krishna's power, were amazed to see his various extraordinary activities. The men approached Nanda Maharaj and told him that after seeing how Krishna, a boy only seven years old, had lifted a mountain, and how he had previously killed the demoness Putana and generated extreme attraction in the hearts of everyone in Vrindavan, the men had become doubtful and bewildered about how Sri Krishna could possibly have taken birth in the unsuitable environment of a cowherd community. Nanda replied by relating to them what Gargamuni had told him about Sri Krishna. Gargamuni had said that in previous three ages, Nanda's boy had manifested himself in white, red, and yellow forms, whereas now in the Dwapara age, he had assumed his darkish blue form, Krishna Roop. Because he descended as the son of Vasudev, one of his many names is Vasudev, and he has innumerable other names indicating his many qualities and activities. Gargamuni had predicted that Krishna would prevent all sorts of catastrophes in Gokul, spread unlimited auspiciousness and increase the ecstasy of the cowherd men and women. In a previous age, he had provided protection for the saintly brahmanas when they were harassed by low-class dacoits, and there was no proper ruler in society. As the demons in the higher planets can never defeat the demigods who have Lord Vishnu on their side, no enemy can ever defeat those who love Krishna. In his affinity for his devotees and in his opulence and power, Krishna is just like Lord Narayan himself. Overjoyed and awestruck by Gargamuni's statements, the cowherd men concluded that Krishna must be an empowered representative of the Supreme Lord Narayan. Thus they worshipped him and Nanda Maharaj. So today we're reading from text number one. So if you can please uh, repeat after me. Shri Sukha Uvacha Evam Vidhani Karmani Gopa Krishna Sya Vikshyate Atad Virya Vida Prochu Samabhyetya Suvishmitaha Translation and purport by disciples of His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada. Translation Sukadev Goswami said, The Gauhad men were astonished when they saw Krishna's activities such as lifting Govardhan Hill. Unable to understand his transcendental potency, they approached Nanda Maharaj and spoke as follows. Purport. Srila Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur explains this verse as follows. During Lord Krishna's pastime of lifting Sri Govardhan Hill, the cowherd men simply enjoyed the spiritual bliss of the Lord's activities without analyzing them. But afterwards, when they had returned to their homes, perplexity arose within their hearts. Thus they thought, now we have directly seen child Krishna live Govardhan Hill, and we remember how he killed Putana and other demons, extinguished the forest fire, and so on. At the time, we thought that these extraordinary acts occurred because of a benediction from the Brahmanas, or because of Nanda Maharaj's great fortune, or that perhaps this boy had achieved the mercy of Lord Narayan and was thus empowered by him. But all these presumptions are false, because an ordinary seven-year-old boy could never hold up the king of mountains for seven whole days. 
Krishna is not a human being. He must be the Supreme Lord himself. But on the other hand, child Krishna loves it when we coddle him, and he becomes morose when we, his uncles and well-wishers, simple, simply worldly cowherd men, do not give him attention. He appears to become hungry and thirsty, steals yogurt and milk, sometimes plays tricks, tells lies, chatters childishly, and tends the calves. If he is actually the Supreme Lord, why would he do these things? Don't they indicate that he is an ordinary human child? We are totally unable to establish the truth of his identity. Therefore, let us go and inquire from the highly intelligent King of Raja, Nanda Maharaj, and he shall free us from our doubts. According to Srila Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur, the cowherd men thus made up their minds, and then they entered Nanda Maharaj's great assembly hall and questioned him as described in the following verse. Om Ajnanati Mirandhasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padakamalan Shri Guru and Vishnavamscha Shri Ropam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvetam Savadhutam Varijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishagan Vitamscha E Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari Vrishabhano Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpatarubhyascha Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha Paditanam Pavanebhyo Vishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhunityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Shila Prabhupada Ki Chapter 26 of the Srimad Bhagavatam's 10th Canto is entitled Wonderful Krishna Krishna is indeed wonderful in a famous lecture once in New York, Srila Prabhupada was lecturing and one devotee put his hand up and he said, Srila Prabhupada, we're giving out these sweets on Sankirtan. Uh, what is the effect when someone gets a sweet, a Mahaprasad sweet? Prabhupada looked at the devotees and he said, that is simply wonderful. These sweets are simply wonderful. Uh, this distribution of prashadam is simply wonderful and this person will end up coming to the temple and they will become simply wonderful. And then Prabhupada said, this process of Krishna consciousness is simply wonderful. You are all simply wonderful. The philosophy is simply wonderful. And your Krishna is simply wonderful. And then... And then the devotees looked and said, Prabhupada, you are simply wonderful. <laughs> and Prabhupada said, that's all right. Everyone can become. So Krishna is truly simply wonderful. The residents of Raj are astonished. Su Vishmita. Su is an intensifier. Completely, absolutely, intensely astonished by Krishna. He has lifted Govardhan Hill. 
This is the same Krishna who some years before when a fruit vendor came and in that day and age the system was bartering and Krishna wanted some fruits. Then with his hand, with his tiny hand, he tried to pick up some grains. How much grains could he pick up in his hand? And he picked up whatever he could and while he was walking to the fruit vendor, most of it fell out of his hands. He couldn't even hold the grains. That same Krishna, in the same hand, for seven days, lifted Govardhan Hill. Su Vishmita, how is it possible? Krishna who says, I am Bhava Grahi Janardana. I accept the intention, the sincerity, the purity. I accept the heart of the person who approaches me. And then this same Krishna, Putana, comes externally to serve him but with a heart with an intention with a motivation to kill krishna and what does krishna do he grants her liberation in the spiritual world a whole bucky yam stanakalakutam how could krishna be so merciful that's astonishing krishna seems to contradict himself krishna is nitya tripta he's eternally satisfied Yet the same Krishna becomes hungry to uh, taste the milk from Mother Yashoda. Krishna, who is Vishuddha Sattva, he's beyond all the modes, seems to become very, very angry. Krishna, who is Abhayam, fearless, is running in fear of Mother Yashoda, who's running after him with a stick. Krishna, who's uh, Lakshmi Sahasra, Satasam Brahma Savya Manam. Uh, becomes a simple cowherd boy. So Krishna is completely contradictory. Krishna is completely inconceivable. Krishna does things we can't imagine. One group from the Menza, they came to see Srila Prabhupada and they presented Srila Prabhupada with the problem of rocks. You understand the problem of rocks? This is a philosophical riddle. And they asked Srila Prabhupada, can God create something that's so heavy that he can't lift it? So what are you going to say? If you say he can't create something so heavy, then there's something God can't create? So how is he all powerful? And if you say, uh, yes, he can create something that he can't lift, then there's something God can't lift. So how is he all powerful? So they thought they had cornered Prabhupada with this age-old riddle. And what did Prabhupada say? Can God create something so heavy that he can't lift it? Yes. And then he can lift it. <laughs> <laughs> Krishna is inconceivable. And therefore the residents of Vrindavan are looking at Krishna and he is completely capturing their mind. Yesterday, Sarvabhama Prabhu was saying, Manohar, Krishna is Manohar. He steals the mind. You see, if someone does something impossible, it will stick in your mind because it astonishes your intelligence. If someone does something very, very beautiful, then it will stick in your consciousness because they've stolen your mind. They've astonished your mind. And if someone does something for you which is so incredibly kind and compassionate, then it will always stick in your consciousness because they've astonished your heart. And what has Krishna done when he's lifted Govardhan Hill? He's done something impossible which has stolen their intelligence. He's done something so beautiful because for seven days he's had unlimited interactions with them, loving exchanges. He's stolen their mind. And what has Krishna done? He's come to protect them from the wrath of Indra, from the Samvarta cloud. And therefore Krishna has exhibited the supreme compassion on them by saving them on the brink of death. And therefore Krishna has astonished their heart. And therefore, because Krishna has astonished their intelligence, their mind, their heart, they are saying, Su Vishmita, Su Vishmita, we are completely astonished by Krishna. 
In our life, we'll only be able to perceive the wonder of Krishna. We'll only be able to perceive how wonderful Krishna is when we see that Krishna is doing the impossible before me every single day. Not just that, Krishna is doing such beautiful things to me every single day. And not just that, Krishna is being so kind. Krishna is being so compassionate. Krishna is being so affectionate to me. When these emotions come in, then we will also look at Krishna and we will say, Krishna is wonderful. At the moment, at least speaking for myself, we look at Krishna and we may not feel Krishna to be wonderful. Maybe we feel Krishna is nice. Krishna is wise, powerful. Krishna is the Lord. Krishna is in control. But are we looking in front of Krishna and becoming su vishmita, completely astonished that wonderful Krishna, Krishna is completely wonderful. If we come to that point, then uh, we've achieved the goal of Krishna consciousness. So the Brajabhasis are the archetype devotees because they have become captured in all ways by how wonderful Krishna is. And this thought comes in them that maybe Krishna is the Supreme Lord. Because in Vrindavan, Krishna is, of course, Madhurya, very sweet. Vrindavan is Madhurya Dham, it's the place of sweetness. And Krishna is Leela Purushottam, he's the Supreme Lord who performs wonderful pastimes. So there's so much sweetness. But in Vrindavan, it's not that Krishna is not also displaying his Aishvarya. Of course he is displaying his Aishvarya. I mean, lifting Govardhan Hill for seven days, that's pretty majestic. I mean, Krishna opens his mouth and Mother Yashoda sees all the universes within Krishna's mouth. That's pretty majestic. So in Vrindavan, it's not that there's not Aishvarya. There's a lot of Aishvarya. There's incredible Aishvarya. But because the sweetness is so vast, this thought of Krishna's Aishvarya comes but then because the sweetness is so great, it drowns all of the Aishvarya out. Therefore, the Acharyas say the love of the Brajabhasis is oceanic. It's an ocean of sweetness. And if you put a few palmfuls of the salt of Aishvarya in an ocean of sugar, you will not perceive any difference. You see, I could put two palmfuls of salt and two palmfuls of sugar in here. And then you will feel it to be bittersweet. But if I put a hundred palmfuls of salt, a uh, hundred palmfuls of sugar, and I double the salt and put four palmfuls of salt, even though I've doubled the salt, still you won't taste any salt because the sweetness has now completely overpowered it. So that is the situation of Raja, that Krishna is so very, very, very sweet. Uh, madhuram, Madhuram, in all ways, his eyes are sweet, his lips are sweet, his movements are sweet, his sentiments are sweet, his interactions are sweet. Uh, everything about Krishna is sweet. And Krishna's sweetness is never compromised when he has to do his business in Vrindavan. So even though Krishna has to lift Govardhan Hill, he doesn't need to change his form. He just does it with his sweet, tiny, small hand and finger. And he just lifts Govardhan Hill, not compromising his sweet appearance. When Krishna wants to kick over the cart demon, Shakatasura, then he doesn't need to change his form with his tiny, small foot, which is very, very soft. He just gives that car one kick, boom, finished. When Krishna wants to suck the life out of Putana, he doesn't need to change his form. With his soft red bimba lips, he simply sucks and all of her life is removed. When Krishna wants to kill the Keshi demon, doesn't need to change his form. With his small fist, he annihilates the Keshi demon. 
And so in this way, Krishna is wonderful. And here Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur is giving the commentary that the Brajabhasis, they have seen all these things. But in the moment, because the sweetness of Krishna was so great, nothing else came to their mind. So in the moment when the pastimes were going on, then the Brajabhasis, nothing came to their mind. They were just enjoying the complete sweetness of Krishna. But now the pastime has ended and they're thinking about it, looking back in retrospect. Then they're thinking, that was amazing. That was amazing. Have you ever experienced that in your life? That sometimes in the moment when you're having a very deep exchange of reciprocation with Krishna, there's just an enjoyment of that moment. And then later on when you reflect back and you think about that, you think, oh my God, that was amazing. But in the moment, the, uh, the, the extraordinariness of that uh, interaction doesn't dawn on you because Krishna's sweetness is so great. So now, after the pastime has concluded, this whole chapter, chapter 26, is almost a whole chapter in which they're trying to digest everything that has just happened. The narration of the Govardhan Leela uh, has not finished. The first, the narration in the 10th canto that's described in the greatest length is the Rasa dance. We know the Rasa Panchadhyaya 29 to 33. But the second pastime in the 10th canto that is described in the greatest detail is this pastime, the lifting of Govardhan Hill, chapters 24, 25, 26, and 27. So it's four chapters and the pastime hasn't actually ended yet. But in the middle of the pastime, there's one chapter, this chapter, Wonderful Krishna, which is the Brajabhasi is trying to digest everything that's gone on. And so now they will all come to Nanda Maharaj and they will try to understand who is Krishna? What is all this that has gone on? And uh, in this way they're just appreciating how wonderful Krishna is. When we read this, our prayer is very much that just as the Brajabhasis have become completely enamored by Krishna's uh, Krishna's incredible reciprocation in their life that somehow we will come to the point of realizing that Krishna is also incredibly reciprocating with us in our life. We may read Krishna's pastimes, we may read about Krishna's character and we may like his character, we may like his pastimes but we may not perceive this is wonderful character, wonderful pastimes. When we look through the Shastra, then there are many aspects of how Krishna is wonderful that the devotees are appreciating. And what I'll try to do today is share with you some of the wonderful ways in which Krishna uh, is appreciated by the devotees. Some ways in which Krishna, uh, the Krishna's devotees appreciate how wonderful he is. And when we take time to contemplate these things, then maybe we will also look at Krishna and think he's wonderful. One of the ways in which the devotees see how wonderful Krishna is, is they say Krishna is wonderful and Krishna's teachings are wonderful. After the whole Bhagavad Gita has been spoken between Krishna and Arjun, then what does Sanjaya say? Ityaham Vasudevasya Partasya Cha Mahatmana Samvadamimamoshrausham Adbutam Romaharshanam. Sanjaya, after reflecting on the conversation between Krishna and Arjun, says, I've heard the conversation between Vasudeva and Partha. Uh, Partha is a Mahatma and Krishna is an amazing speaker. And this samvadam, this discussion, as I meditate on what has been exchanged between them, adbutam, I'm thinking this is wonderful. 
the teachings of Krishna are so wonderful, Rama Harshanam, that my hairs are standing on end, recalling the conversation that Krishna has. Krishna is wonderful, and Krishna's teachings are wonderful. Every day we're getting an opportunity to read and study and discuss Krishna's teachings. And if we can begin to appreciate how wonderful Krishna's teachings are, then you will look at Krishna and say, Krishna is wonderful. They say, if you want to find a new idea, then go to an old book. There's no new ideas in the world. Because Krishna, the Vedas, Vyasadeva has already given all of the ideas, the best ideas, the best teaching, the best wisdom. In the world today, there are so many books that become bestsellers, but nothing can compare with Krishna's teachings. Isn't it in the world you find a book by Rhonda Byrne, The Secret, The Law of Attraction? But Krishna already gave it. Raja Vidya Raja Guyam Pavitram Idamutamam. Krishna says, I'm already giving you the king of knowledge, the most secret of all secrets. Eckhart Tolle wrote a book in the world, The Power of Now. But Krishna already explained it. Brahma Bhuta Prashanatma Na Sochati Na Kangshati. If you come to the Brahma Bhuta level, you don't lament for the past, you don't hanker for the future, you're completely living in the now. You're complete, he's all, Krishna already gave it. Stephen Covey wrote a book, The Seven Habits of Highly Successful People. Krishna already gave it. Abhayam Satvasam Sudir Jnana Yoga Vyavastiti Danam Damascha Yagyascha Svadhyaya stapa arjavam. If you're charitable, if you're renounced, if you absorb your mind in study of the Vedas, if you um, are truthful, clean, these are the habits of the most successful people. Deepak Chopra wrote a book, The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari. It became a bestseller. It's already been done. Parikshit was the king who gave up everything. What does Bhagavatam say? Atma jaya suta gara pashu dravina bandushu raje cha vikale nityam virudham mamatam jaho The moment Parikshit found out that he had been cursed to die in seven days, what did he give up? Atma, he gave up all attachment to his body. Jaya, he gave up his wife. Suta, he gave up his children. Pashu, he gave up his uh, animals. Pasu, uh, Dravina, he gave up his treasury. Bandushu, he gave up his family, uh, his friends. Raje, he gave up his whole kingdom. Pariksha, he didn't even sell it, he just gave it away. <laughs> Pashu, Pashu is, uh, it means animals, but in those in Vedic times, Pashu basically means your mode of transport. Because Pashu is the way you get from one place to another. So Deepak Chopra wrote the monk who sold his Ferrari. Parikshi already gave up the original Ferrari, the original mode of transport. The Pashu, he gave it up. There's nothing new in the world. Krishna's teachings are the most wonderful teachings. Therefore, Sanjaya says, Adbhutam, Rauma Harshanam. These teachings are so wonderful, my hairs are standing on end. If we begin to appreciate the wonder of Krishna's teachings, then we'll look at Krishna and say, wonderful Krishna. Another way in which the devotees appreciate how wonderful Krishna is, is the wonderful arrangements of Krishna in your life. After the whole battle of Kurukshetra had taken place, Yudhisthira and everyone went to see Bhishma Dev. They wanted to know how did it all transpire in this way? Why did Krishna arrange everything in this way? And what did Bhishma Dev say? Nahyasya karhichit papan puman veda viditsitam 
yadvijigyasayayukta muyanti kavayopihi if you try to understand Krishna's arrangements, if you try to understand how Krishna is making everything transpire in this world, muyanti kavayopihi, you will become completely bewildered, you will become completely astonished, you will become completely baffled to understand Krishna's arrangements. Krishna is more clever than any living entity. And Krishna is arranging things in such a way we don't even know what's going on. They say Krishna is the master chess player. You know, if you play chess, the best chess players, they can think four or five moves ahead. So they know all the permutations in their head. If he does that, I'll do that, and then I'll do that, and then if he does that, then I'll do that. That's how you win. Krishna is the master chess player. He's 10, 100, 1,000 moves ahead of everyone else. Moving everything in such a way. Muyanti kavayopihi. Even the kavis, even the great learned people, they are in wonder at how Krishna is arranging everything. Even Srila Prabhupada once in a lecture, he said, I was born in one family, my Guru Maharaj was born in another family. Who would know that I would come to his shelter? Who would know that I would come to America? Who would know that all of you would come to take shelter of me? Who would know that this Krishna consciousness movement would spread all over the world? These are all the arrangements of Krishna. No one can understand how things are going on. This is miracle. Adbhutam. Krishna's arrangements are amazing. They say you have to look, live life going forwards. But sometimes you can only understand life looking backwards. If we're able to look back in our life and appreciate how wonderful Krishna is in how he arranges everything. One Christian monk, he prays, God, I prayed to you for strength and you just kept sending me obstacles. God, I prayed to you for wisdom and you just kept sending me problems to solve. God, I prayed to you for love and I found all these people at my doorstep asking for help. God, now I know. You never gave me anything I wanted, but you gave me everything I needed. So one devotee said to me the other day, I'm scared of praying to Krishna because he doesn't give me what I want. He gives me what I need and I don't want that. <laughs> Because Krishna is so ingenious, Krishna is the master chess player, he knows what we need and he's making arrangements, wonderful arrangements. Who is that devotee who can look in their life and say, wonderful arrangements, wonderful Krishna. Another way in which we experience how wonderful Krishna is, is Krishna's wonderful mercy, isn't it? I quoted this verse, Aho bakiyam stanaka lukutam. In the third canto, the reflection is there on Putana, who somehow came to kill Krishna. But Krishna still granted her liberation. The devotees are in awe, they're remembering this verse and they're thinking, how wonderful Krishna's mercy is. This verse was so powerful. That when Sukadev Goswami came out of the womb and he left home and Vyasadeva was thinking, how will I bring Sukadev back so I can teach him the whole Bhagavatam? Then two verses were relayed to Sukadev Goswami so he could hear them. And one of those verses was this verse. Aho bakiyam stanaka lakutam. How merciful Krishna is. That Putana came to kill him, but Krishna still gave her liberation. 
And when Sukadev heard these verses, his, his mind was in wonder. Krishna's mercy is so wonderful. Who is this Krishna? I want to hear more about Krishna. Even I am an Atmaram. Atmaram Ascha Munayo. Mirgrantha Apirukrume. Guruvantya Hai Tukim Bhaktim Ittam Bhuto Gunohari. I'm Atmaram. I'm completely satisfied. But I want to know Ittam Bhuto Gunohari. What is the guna of this Hari? What is the qualities? I want to hear more about wonderful Krishna. That he's so merciful. The devotee looks in their life and thinks how merciful Krishna was on me. When Krishna comes as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then that mercy expands to an unlimited degree. Therefore, what does Kaviraj Goswami say? Shri Krishna Chaitanya Daya Karaha Vichar Vichar Korite Chite Pabecha Matkar If you want to use your intelligence, Shri Krishna Chaitanya Daya Think about the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Kare vichar. Just think about it. Think about Mahaprabhu's mercy. Vichar karite. If you do think about Mahaprabhu's mercy, babe chamatkar, you will think this mercy is incredible. How Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy is spreading across the world. How Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy is transforming people's hearts. How Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy goes to people who don't even want it. In the north of England, the Sankirtan devotees wanted to give every, everyone an opportunity to say Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's names. So you know what they began doing at one point? Is they would go on the motorway and there would be motorway bridges. You see, where all the cars go underneath, there's a bridge. And what they would do in the middle of the night they would put big stickers. Go Ranga. You can say, Go Ranga. So if you go up and down the motorway in the north of England, on every motorway bridge, you see Go Ranga. So once I was distributing books in the north of England and I stopped one person, he took a book, he was walking away, and I said, Before you go, can you say Goranga? He said, Goranga. He said, I know Goranga. I said, you know Goranga? He said, yeah, yeah, I know Goranga. I said, what's Goranga? He said, Goranga is the name of the construction firm that makes all the motorway bridges. <laughs> I said, well, not exactly. But then again, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu does make a bridge. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is making a bridge. Because we're unqualified, because we have no strength. Eka kia ma nahi paya bal. What strength do we have by ourselves? But then when we come together in the Sankirtan movement by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's grace, it builds a bridge over all of our weakness to attain. So then when we think, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is giving me an opportunity, wonderful mercy. Then we look at Krishna and we say, wonderful mercy, wonderful Krishna. Krishna's teachings are wonderful. Krishna's mercy is wonderful. Krishna's arrangements are wonderful. Krishna's creation is wonderful. What does Krishna say in Bhagavad Gita? Yad yad vibhuti mat sattvam shrimad urjitam evava tata deva vagachatvam mamate jom sasambhavam You want to know how wonderful Krishna is? Look around at the world and see all the wonderful things in the world. The sun rising, the sun setting, the beautiful mountains, the ocean, you see the amazing ability someone has, all these wonderful things surrounding us, and then we realize, Mama Te Jom Sasambhavam. This is just one spark of Krishna's splendor. Then, when you see the wonderful creation, you won't just see the wonderful creation, but you'll remember who is the wonderful person behind this creation. 
isn't it? The Guru was at the airport and he was sitting next to his Brahmachari disciple and an air hostess walked past and the Guru said to the disciple, beautiful, isn't she? So what do you say when your spiritual master asks you? Maybe it's a test. So he didn't know what to say. And then what did the spiritual master say? If she is that beautiful, imagine how beautiful Krishna is who created her. Wonderful Krishna can be seen in the wonderful creation. Wonderful Krishna can be seen in the wonderful devotees. Isn't it? The devotees are wonderful. The devotees are amazing. The devotees are incredible. What the devotees do, how they live, their character, their saintliness. When the manor was closing down, then, and they wanted to do a, a case to close Bhaktivedanta Manor down, then we had to employ a lawyer, of course, as is. So these lawyers are very, very smart. They read books. That's what they've done their whole life. So, you know, they read books quick. So this lawyer, he was defending. So the devotee said, because you're defending us, you should know something about our philosophy. Any opportunity to distribute a book. <laughs> so he said, yeah, yeah, give me all your books. I'll read them. You know, these guys, they just, they just read really quick, you know, they're lawyers. So he came back after some days, and uh, if I remember correctly, Shiv Ramaraj was the GBC, and he spoke to Shiv Ramaraj. He goes, I understood your philosophy. I got it. I understood it. He goes, but one thing I want to tell you, your founder, he's amazing. So Shiv Ramaraj, at this time he was 30, 40 years old, whatever. He said, yeah, yeah, we know. <laughs> I mean... We know also, that's why we joined. He said, you don't know. You don't know. He said, no, 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 we know. We, we, we heard the story, we read the biography, we, we're trying to dedicate. He said, no, no, you don't understand how amazing your founder is. Why? He said, because you're 40 years old. I'm 70 years old and I know what it feels like to be in a body that's 70 and to do what this person has done at the age of 70. This is extraordinary. So Krishna's devotees are wonderful. Krishna's devotees are amazing. There are two verses in the Bhagavatam that are repeated twice, practically verbatim. And you know one of those verses? Tulayama lave napi na svargam na punar bhavam bhagavati sangi sangasya martyanam kimuta shisha. This verse appears twice in the first canto and the fourth canto. And what this verse is saying? Tulayama lave napi na svargam na punar bhavam. One may go to the heavens, one may get the opportunity of liberation, one may get all types of material enjoyment, but none of these things compare Bhagavati Sangi Sangasya to the association of a devotee. Because Krishna's devotees are wonderful. Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur, he comments on this verse and he says, even more powerful than association with Krishna is association with Krishna's devotees. And you know how he establishes this? He says, let me tell you about another verse in the Bhagavatam. And what's the other verse in the Bhagavatam? Natatasya bhaven moho. There's one verse in which it said, there is only one thing which is more dangerous than association with the opposite gender. Do you know what it is? What can be more dangerous than association with the opposite gender? 
association with someone who's attached to the opposite gender. Therefore, Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur says, what can be more dangerous than association with Krishna? <laughs> association with one who's attached to Krishna. Bhagivati Sangi Sangha Sya Martya Nam Kimuta Shisha. This verse is repeated twice. Krishna's devotees are wonderful. So the residents of Braj, they're in wonder. Wonderful Krishna. This whole chapter is all about wonderful Krishna. Su Vishmita, astonished. We go in front of Krishna, maybe we are not. Su Vishmita, we're not astonished. Maybe we look at Krishna and we don't think wonderful Krishna. But maybe like the residents of Raj, if we step aside in our life for some moments and deeply consider how wonderful Krishna's teachings are, how wonderful Krishna's arrangements are in my life, how wonderful Krishna's creation is, how wonderful the devotees of Krishna are and how wonderful Krishna's mercy is, then as we appreciate how wonderful all of these things are, then we'll look at Krishna and we'll say, Krishna, you are the most wonderful. And if we come to that point, then our life is successful. Because then when we know how wonderful Krishna is, then our mind will not budge one inch from Krishna. And then, manmana bhava mad bhakto, becomes very, very easy when our mind is captured by the wonder of Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Thank you very much. Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So, if there are any uh, comments, corrections, reflections, or anything anyone would like to ask. You say, <coughs> can you say a little bit more about our minds will not budge an inch from Krishna? Just. In the beautiful verse, Rupa Goswami says, Yuvatinam yatha yuni yunam cha yuvato yatha Mano bhi ramate tadvan mano me ramatam tvai Rupa Goswami says, just as the minds of young girls are naturally drawn towards young boys and just as the minds of young boys are spontaneously attracted towards young girls Mano bhiramate tadvan, mano me ramatam tvai. May my mind be as naturally drawn towards you. We all have that experience of being captured by something wonderful or so called wonderful of the material world. Be it the opposite gender, be it a aspiration, be it something that we're so much seeking, so much mad after. We all have that experience of being so fixated on something that our mind doesn't budge an inch. Now we want that to uh, be transferred to Krishna. We know that story. One devotee came to Prabhupada and said, Prabhupada, sometimes I forget Krishna. <laughs> Prabhupada said... <laughs> You always forget Krishna and sometimes you remember him. So we are. Yena teena prakarena mana Krishna niveshayet. Sarve vidini se dasyu reta yo reva kinkara. Everything we're following, all the rules, regulations, all the angas of bhakti, somehow or other, fix the mind on Krishna. Still our mind may divert. Therefore Krishna says to Arjun, Yato yato nischalati manaschan chalam astiram tatastato niyam yetad atman yevavasamnayet. 
Krishna looks at Arjun and he says, maybe, does he say, maybe your mind will wonder? If Arjun, you find your mind wonders. No. Krishna says to Arjun, when your mind wonders. He's already predicting it's going to happen. Manas chanchala mastiram. Bring it back under the control. Just keep bringing it back. So right now we have to bring it back. Keep bringing it back. And then one day, Vaime nanya vishaya matir madhupate sakrit ratim udvahatad adha gange vogamadanvati kunti marani prays she says krishna sever all my attachments so that my mind can flow to you like the ganges flows towards the ocean without being impeded by anything sneha pasham imam chindi dridam pandu suvrishnishu this sneha pasham these ropes of affection for so many things of the world is preventing my complete fixation on Krishna. Therefore, sneha pasha me mam chindi. Cut it. So that's what we're praying for. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you for such an nectarian class. Um, Maharaj, I actually had a question related to the, um, uh, the purport of the verse. So uh, just one thought came in my mind that um, it says that after they went home, then this perplexity came in their heart. <clears throat> Before, while they, like you explained, while they were there looking observing the Govardhan Leela, they were really enjoying it, but when they went home, this perplexity came. Um, so in the spiritual, this Leela actually happened in Bhoma Vrindavan. Um, yeah, I'm trying to get to my question. The doubt that came in my mind was that, um, do they have their, is this doubt coming because of their own free will? Because afterwards, Krishna, did he, what happened afterwards? Was this their own free will question that they actually had a doubt or was this doubt created by um, yoga maya, by Krishna's arrangement for something else that was meant to happen in the future? Sorry. Yes. My understanding is that this uh, simultaneous doubt about Krishna and or Krishna's supremacy and then the overcoming of love, uh, this is a Nitya Leela. This is eternally going on everywhere, not just in Bhauma, even in the spiritual world. That yes, the residents of Braj are looking at Krishna and saying, he can't be ordinary. He can't just be someone who's been empowered by, uh, by the Brahmana's blessings. He must be the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But then in the very next moment, the love is just overcoming, the love is just covering. The love is just taking precedence. Krishna's sweetness is just conquering everything. So this doubt is, um, is there. It's, uh, it's a part of the Leela. It's, uh, it's going on. Therefore, the, if you look at the Paribhasa Sutra, the Acharyas say every Shastra has a Paribhasa Sutra and the Paribhasa Sutra of the 10th Canto the 10th canto has its very own Paribhasa Sutra or Emperor verse. And that verse is 10, 8, 45. And that verse appears in the chapter where Mother Yashoda is seeing the universal form within Krishna's mouth. And when Mother Yashoda sees the universal form in Krishna's mouth, then in that moment she's saying, Oh my God, Krishna, who's worshipped by all the sages, by all these stutis in the Vedic prayers and then in the very next moment Mother Yashoda thinks anyway he's my child <clears throat> and the, Chakravati Pad says this is the emperor verse of Krishna's Leela because this is the hallmark of Krishna's Leela that Krishna's sweetness is so great so that even when Krishna shows something so magnificent, so munificent, so majestic, 
that beyond the shadow of a doubt, Krishna must be the Supreme Personality of Godhead, still because the sweetness is so great, it still trumps it. That's the love of Raj. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Actually, you are helping me get to the real question that I wanted to ask because we understand that this doubt comes and then it just goes away. Krishna just does something and they... So Maharaj, are they, um, do they remember that they had a doubt? And, oh yeah, we doubt like this, but no, no, no. We just love him. Or do they, um, I mean, what is that? Or is that doubt actually serving a purpose? Is Krishna relishing this? I mean, what purpose? Who is being served by this doubt, if that makes sense? Do they remember that they had a doubt and then they remember, yeah, we doubt, but then we love him just so much. Or is Krishna happy to see this, that they doubt and then they just forget? I'm, or does he make them forget this? I'm so sorry, my question is not. Yes. <laughs> What's the purpose of them having a doubt, basically? Is that what you're asking? Yes. Well, we can say one purpose of them having a doubt is to reveal how sweet Krishna is to the world to reveal the glory of Krishna, that even though Krishna is showing so much majestic things and the doubt comes, still that doubt never takes root, that doubt never takes hold, that doubt never becomes prominent or fixated within their mind because Krishna's sweetness is too great. And therefore, it's, this is... Um, in Gopal Champu, Jiva Goswami says, I read about Krishna and it was amazing. But when I read about the love that Krishna's devotees have for Krishna and how they express that love and how Krishna then reciprocates with that love, then my heart melted. So when we see the love of the Brajabhasis, that even though they're seeing so much, they're so enamored by Krishna's sweetness that none of it even matters then we realize, what kind of love is this? This is, a, this is a love that's so great that even Krishna has to come to this world to experience it. And so all of this is revealing to the world how glorious the love is um, of the Brajabhasis. They say, if you find a theology in which the devotee cries for God, you can understand this is advanced. If you find a theology in which God cries for his devotee, you can understand this is even more advanced. But if you find a theology where God becomes a devotee to cry for himself, then you can understand this is off the scale. This is Gaudiya theology. This is Vraja Prem. This is the 10th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. That yes, the doubts are coming. And that doubts, when they come, they reveal to the world that doubts of such things, of Krishna's supremacy, mean nothing in the midst of the Krishna's sweetness. And uh, in that way, we understand the essence of what real love is. Because Mahaprabhu says, love which is weakened by Aishwarya, Sitila Prem, this is not so pleasing to me. But when there is a type of Prema in which all of these things may come, but they don't take root, the sweetness comes to the forefront, that kind of love, I become Jita, Ajita, conquered. Uh, I, there's many... <laughs> I'm looking at time. I don't know how it should be. Okay, well, maybe one last. <coughs> Thank you so much, Maharaj. Beautiful. Uh, just in response to the Mataji's last question, there was one devotee who was asking many questions of Srila Prabhupada about Radharani. He was peppering him with questions. And finally, Prabhupada put his hand out. He says, that's enough. There are some things that Krishna keeps secret. <laughs> <laughs>
But in regards to your earlier comments about uh, the beauty of the material world and particularly women to men and men to women, when Chipurari uh, Maharaj was uh, finished with his sannyas ceremony in New York, he um, went up to Prabhupada's quarters, he was there, entered the room, paid his obeisances, and Prabhupada looked up and said, the women in New York, they're very beautiful. Chipurari's freshly minted sannyasi didn't know what to say, he was speechless, so he didn't, he didn't say anything. Again, Prabhupada said, the women in New York, they were very beautiful. And again, Tripurari was at a loss for words. Finally, Prabhupada said, yes, I've seen it. The women in New York, they're very beautiful. And they're controlling the men with their beauty. <laughs> so this is our, this is our, we have to see beauty in everything. And at the same time, we see Krishna everywhere. How beautiful, even in the form of a beautiful woman or very nice looking man, but as you pointed out, it's just a spark of Krishna's splendor. Thank you so much for sharing. Hare Krishna. Uh, okay. <laughs> Thank you again. Such a wonderful class. Since we're all only here because of the blessings of Prabhupada, especially Prabhupada, you could say your guru, but especially Prabhupada, when we're neophytes, isn't it more powerful if we go to our guru? Who am I to go pray to Krishna? How can I, what is the benefit? How, how is the magic and how is the gift there? How can I even think about going, seeking something from Krishna? Don't, isn't it more powerful, more potent to go to my guru, go to Shri Prabhupada? Yeah. <clears throat> well, the first consideration is that the Guru is also telling us to go to Krishna. <laughs> so if we're actually following the Guru, and then the Guru says, go to Krishna. One time Srila Prabhupada said, um, I may let you down, but Krishna will never let you down. So Krish, the Guru is also helping us to develop... We don't believe that Prabhupada yeah, will... Yeah, let of, of course, yeah. We know that Srila Prabhupada will never let us down. But the point is that the Guru is still wanting the devotee to have a relationship with Krishna, but not to the exclusion of the Guru. So therefore, just like someone may say, why do we have so many deities? Why not just have one deity? Why do we need multiple deities? Then someone may say, why do we need any deities? Why not just have Krishna? But the point is that by connecting in all of these different ways, then each one of them is bringing a unique ingredient which is helping us to develop our prema. But it's not that um, one needs to be taken <coughs> to the exclusion of another. We, were, we go in front of all the forms of Krishna. And we may, in all the forms of Krishna, have a different prayer. When we go in front of Nishingadev, we may say, Nishingadev, Pull apart my ego. When we go in front of Mahaprabhu, we may say, You are Karuna Avatar. Mosama Patita Prabhu, Napai Behar. You won't find anyone more fallen. Give me your mercy. When we go in front of Krishna, we may pray, Let me become enamored by your beautiful pastimes. When we go in front of Jagannath, we may say, Your eyes are very big. Please see the small acts that I do and give me mercy. When we go in front of Guru, we may pray for strength. Gurudev, Kripa, Bindi, Kripa Bindu Diya, give me your mercy. So to all the different spiritual personalities we're approaching uh, with a very personal prayer because all of them can give us a different ingredient. But yes, Yasya Prasadat Bhagavat Prashado. If you do everything but you don't satisfy the Guru, it won't work. Therefore, Srila Prabhupada says, you can do a Veda-based search. We once did a Veda-based search on the words, secret of success. Because everyone wants to know, what's the secret of success? You can go home and you can do the Veda-based search today. The secret of success, 
many hits come up. And in 90% of the hits, you know what Prabhupada says, right? What is the secret of success? To accept the orders of the spiritual master as the life and soul. And so the Guru is always kept as an extremely prominent um, relationship. And then all the other things that the good spiritual wealth that the Guru is connecting us to, we avail of under the order and guidance of the Guru. Ado Guru Padashraya. But then from there the Guru takes us um, to Krishna. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm confused. There's too many hands. I guess. Yeah. I'm, okay. So, okay. Mother Sarva Mangala gets the final word. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> I just think um, how nicely you explain um, how you can't <laughs> understand wonder through the rational mind, and uh, just when you think of the word wonder, it means you don't. You just don't, can't grasp it any other way than accepting. It's yes. just like children have a sense of wonder sometimes. They don't know very much. Uh, they're not developed with, uh, intellectually, but they have a sense of wonder.